Hello? We're gonna do a physics problem. Okay, so, you know, I was thinking, hey, I haven't done a physics problem in a while, and I kind of feel like doing a physics problem because I kind of enjoy it. I don't know about you, but I kind of enjoy physics problems. So, I kind of made this one up. Uh, it might be the end of the semester for you, so you might have already missed this, but I'm just gonna do it anyway. You'll catch up later, maybe in the future, maybe two years from now, we don't know, right? That's how the internet works. Okay, so here is my problem. I have a ladder and it's leaning up against a wall and then there's a person on the ladder. And this is a ladder that's uh, up against a wall with no friction at the, on the wall. But the question is, there's friction down here. There has to be friction down at the bottom. And the question is, what does the minimum coefficient coefficient of friction have to be in order for the ladder to not slide. Okay, so um, so that's what we're looking for, the coefficient of friction, static friction, mu s. We don't know. So I made up some values because we're going to need them later. Uh, so the length of the ladder, I picked as four meters. This human is one meter up the ladder. The angle is 30 degrees. The mass of the ladder is 10 kilograms and the human is 70. Okay, so you have a problem, you're not sure what to do. I guess I should first say that if this is the minimum coefficient of friction, then I do know something about the coefficient of friction. I know that there's a friction force and that friction force is going to be parallel to the surface and it's gonna be proportional to the force normal to the surface. So I can say the frictional force F, I'll call it F, F is less than or equal to mu s times n, and let's call this n2 because that's what I was calling it. I'll just get to that in a second. So this says that the harder these two things are pushed together, uh, the more friction you get. And if we're at the minimum coefficient, then this is actually gonna be equal to. Okay, so that's my relationship between friction and normal force. I'm clearly gonna need that. But other than that, let's just go ahead and draw a force diagram for the ladder. So I'm gonna draw the ladder right here, it's just a stick. Now, here's where we get to the big difference between a lot of the previous force diagrams and this one, in that in previous cases, we thought of objects as point masses. So they didn't really matter where the forces were, but here it matters. It matters where that force is. So that's why I need to draw the dimensions of the ladder so I can draw where each force is pushing on it. Let's just start with the simple ones. The first is the gravitational force. If the uniform, if the ladder has a uniform density, then the gravitational force is equivalent to acting at the center. It actually acts on all ladder, the whole ladder. But I can just put it right here in the middle. And I'll call that M1G, where, where G is, and I'll put that as a vector, because it's a vector, where G is the gravitational field. I'll write that right here. G equals zero, negative 9.8, zero newtons per kilogram as a vector. Then I have the, I do not have the gravitational force of the person acting on the ladder, because that's not the way it happens. But it, what happens really is the gravitational force pulls down on the person and the ladder pushes up on the person. And that means the person pushes down on the ladder with a force equal to that weight. So I'm going to put the weight of the person on the ladder, even though it's technically wrong, okay? But let me just draw right here, here's the person. So here I have M2G pulling down, and then I have to have N ladder pushing up. And so these two have to be balanced because the, the net force has to be zero since the, the person's at rest. And so this has to have the same magnitude as that. Now, because forces are an interaction between two things, then if the ladder pushes up, the person pushes down on the ladder. That's how we get that. Okay, so I'm gonna put right here, M2G, um, yeah, and I'll draw the, the locations of those in just a second. Now what else do I have acting in the ladder? So I, I have to do long range forces like gravity, things that are touching like the person. What else is touching? Well, the top of the wall is touching. And since it's frictionless up here, this can only push this way. So I'm gonna call this N1. That's because it's a normal force, it's perpendicular to the wall, um, and that's why it's that way. Finally, I have the contact with the bottom down here, and I'm gonna actually draw that as two forces. I have my 
two forces. So there's going to be a normal force pushing up and a friction force pushing this way. So I'll call this N2 because there's two normal forces. And then this I'll call F friction. And that's why you see I have that N2. Because I knew I had I had two problems. Okay. And if you didn't, if you didn't know that, that's fine, because you're not gonna know these problems before you work them. That wouldn't be any fun. You figure these things out as you're doing them. Okay. So um, let's just let's just put these values in here. I know this distance is L, which I'll just call it L for now. I'll put in the number later. This is gonna be L over two. And then this distance from here to there is S. I'm getting kind of messy. I'll slip that off. Okay, if the ladder is at rest, if it's in equilibrium, if it's not accelerating, then three things have to be true. The net force in the X direction has to be zero. The net force in the Y direction has to be zero. And the net torque about any point has to be zero. And that says it doesn't rotate, okay? It doesn't rotationally accelerate, actually. So let's write this down. I'm gonna run out of room. So I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it over there and then I'll solve for it. So here I have the first one, F net X equals zero. So what forces are in the X direction? Well, I have N1 pushing that way and I have the friction force pushing back. These don't have any X components. So this is just gonna be equal to N1 minus the friction. And you'll notice that there's no longer vectors on those symbols because those are the X components of those forces. They happen to be all in the X component, but that's why they're no longer vectors. Okay. And that's why there's a minus sign. We don't deal with minus vectors, but components have negative signs. Okay, so there I have N1 and F. If I want to, I can go ahead and use this definition for the friction force, mu S times N, because we're at the minimum part. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. So zero equals N1 minus mu S N2. And remember, that's the Greek letter mu. It looks like an M, but the Greek letter mu, we like to be cool. Okay. Um, I can solve that for mu, but yeah, let's do that. Mu S equals, if I add this to both sides and then divide both sides by N2, I get N1 over N2. But I don't know N1, I don't know N2. Okay, now let's do this. F net, I can't spell F net. F net Y equals zero. So here I have zero. I have the gravitational, two gravitational forces pushing down and the normal force pushing up. So I have N2 minus M1G minus M2G. That's it. So I can solve this for N2 and I get N2 equals M1 plus M2 G. And this really makes sense. What is supporting everything? It's just the ground. The ground is supporting it. So that normal force from the ground has to support the ladder no matter what. I can put this in up here and I get mu S equals N1 over M1 plus M2 G. And so you see here I'm in a problem if I just use normal force laws, I can't solve this problem because I don't know N1, those are M's. So I can't, I can't solve it. So I need another equation to get another variable, to solve for another variable. And this is where we use the torque equation. So I'm gonna erase this part maybe. So since the thing is in rotational equilibrium, the following has to be true also. The sum of the torques about any point has to be zero. And so there are several definitions for torque, uh, but I'm going to use this one. Uh, R, F, perpendicular. No, yeah. Well, R perpendicular, F perpendicular. No, F, that's right. So that means that we can either take the distance, the force, times the perpendicular distance to the point of rotation, or we can take the distance and the perpendicular force. I think this one's gonna be easier. And if it's not rotating about some point, it's not rotating about another point, okay? So we can pick whatever point we want. Now here's where my experience comes into play. I'm gonna pick that as my point. 
If I calculate the torques about this point, these two forces go away because they're at zero distance from the point of rotation. So there's no torque. Okay, so now I can calculate the torque about that point. This force is going to be N1 and its perpendicular distance is this distance right here. And so if this is theta and this is L, then this is L sine theta. So I get uh, zero equals negative N1 L sine theta. And why is it negative? Well, we have to pick, make a convention. And our convention that we normally use is that uh, forces that make things rotate in the counterclockwise direction, I mean, I'm sorry, in the clockwise direction are positive. Scratch that. For, forces that make things rotate in the clockwise direction are negative, counterclockwise are positive. Okay. But if you switch that up, you, you still get you still be able to solve the problem. Uh, so that's that torque. Now this one is going to be this force M1G and this distance. This is L over two. That's theta. This is going to be L over two cosine theta. So this is going to be plus M1G L over two cosine theta. And now for this one, it's going to be the same thing, but I'm not going to have M1, it's going to be M2, and I'm going to have S. So it's going to be, I'll put it right here, plus S, I'm sorry, plus M2G S cosine theta. So in this equation, the only thing I don't really know is N1, so I can solve this for N1. I'm going to erase the diagram now because I don't really need it, and I'm running out of room and time. Okay, so if I just add this to both sides and then divide by L sine theta, which I'm skipping a step, but you can do that on your own, I get N1 equals this, M1 G L over 2 cosine theta plus M2 G S cosine theta. That's a different thing. All that divided by L sine theta. Yes, that looks messy, but it's not. It's not bad, because look, number, 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 and those are all just numbers, okay? So in, if, if, you, if I substitute this in down here, which is what I want to do, I could substitute that in as an equation. It's not a problem. It's not that bad, okay? Or I could just get a number for this and put that number in right there. That's it. Okay, now, Time to calculate. I'm going to use my, my Python calculator over here. Let's see if I can I use my computer. Uh, let's see. OK. If you want to look, just to see that I'm actually doing it. I don't know if you can tell. I'm going to do it right here. OK. So I'm going to use Python. Uh, new trinket, closed script. Uh, the first thing I can do is enter my values up here. So I have uh, L equals, what did I say, 4? Remember, we don't need to put our units in here. S equals 1. G equals 9.8. I'm using the magnitude of the gravitational field, so it's just 9.8. Uh, theta equals 30 times pi divided by 180. I, I want the angle in radians. That's how I did. M1 is 10. M2 is 70. Okay, so let's just go ahead and write an expression for N1. I'm just going to copy that equation right there in Python. So I'm going to say N1 equals parentheses M1 times G times 0.5 times L times cosine theta. Plus M2 times G times S times cosine theta. All of that divided by L times sine theta. So now I have an expression for in the thing for N1. I'm not even going to print it out. I don't really care. I'm just going to type N1 as this and it calculates it. Uh, now I'm going to write my next equation. Mu equals, I'm just going to type that equation, N1 Remember, case does matter. 
divided by m1, oh, I need two parentheses, m1 plus m2 times g. Now I'm going to say print. I'm going to write it mu equals mu. I'm going to run it. And I get 0.487. I'm going to write it up here so you can see. No units. Boom. Done. Well, that problem took a lot longer than I thought it would, but well, that's fine. We had a good time, right? Um, yeah. So, and the nice thing about doing that calculation like that on Python is, what if I change the length of the ladder to 10 meters? Well, I just, I just go over there and type, bloop, 10 meters. Some other things to think about. What would happen if this, oh, I erased the picture. What if there is friction at both the top and the bottom? It's a lot more complicated. What if there's just friction at the top? It's also a lot more complicated. Um, but it's not impossible. You can do it. So you can see all sorts of problems like this. But the key thing is you need those three equations. Net force in the x direction, net force in the y direction, and the total torque about any point that's equal to zero. And there you go. If you get confused, rewatch this. Bye.